Thanks for tuning in to Red Belt Radio. This episode is scheduled for one fall. My name is Jason, and this show is dedicated to World Wonder Ring Stardom. Today I'm covering Stardom's five-star GP opening night, which took place on July 23rd, 2023. The following will contain spoilers for the 2023 five-star GP opening night. You've been warned. This year's tournament has been highly anticipated and features some of the most talented competitors and the most impressive matchups we could have possibly asked for. The event went above and beyond in terms of living up to the hype and in terms of generating even more. This opening night was a testament to how successful stardom has become. It was a declaration of why this organization is having the landmark year it's been having. And sadly, also, this event was a reminder that no matter how well things are going, accidents can still happen. They can happen when we least expect them, and good people can get hurt. Saya Kamitani is my favorite wrestler in the world, and seeing her get injured tonight was heartbreaking. It has made evaluating the opening night of the GP nearly impossible in the short term. And honestly, the most important thing, aside from any of these matches or any promotional considerations, is that Saya Kamitani is taken care of, gets the care she deserves, and recovers. That being said, I'm going to do my best to discuss the positives and the many high points of this event, as there is a lot that we witnessed that is deserving of our praise. Firstly, I want to acknowledge the pageantry and the production value of the opening ceremony. This was the portion at the top of the show in which the wrestling ring was shrouded in a, a material that served as one giant projector screen and a promotional video played to preface this momentous occasion. And after this promotional video played, this video that not only showcased every previous GP winner, but in particular highlighted the three most recent champions, those being Utami Hayashishita, Shuri, and Julia, this shroud around the ring collapsed to reveal all of the competitors of this year's GP inside of the ring, many of them with new gear, uh, modified appearances, but strangely, I did notice that Utami Hayashishita was the only wrestler that was absent for this opening ceremony. That may have been by design, or it may have been due to some unknown complication. That wasn't entirely clear. It did create this sort of sense of suspense and this sense of uh, further intrigue leading to her eventual arrival uh, prior to her match. The opening night as a whole saw 10 matches uh, pertaining to the five-star GP, five of them from the blue block side of the tournament standings, and five of them from the red block side. Barring the sad circumstances of the main event, there was really not a single bad match in the bunch. People are obviously going to debate their favorite matches. What, what were the matches of the night? And that's a difficult debate because there were so many standouts. But I wanted to first highlight the importance of structuring a card such as this one. Selecting the match order. Who wrestles when? What precedes what? What starts the show? And why? The ordering of the matches from this event in particular was quite impressive. We saw some of the quicker, shorter duration, lower stakes contests occur first, which allowed the night to build and build with a much needed intermission splitting the card in half. To be fair, the second half of the night was harder to keep up with in terms of pacing and pure shock and awe, since I would find myself repeatedly coming to grips with an utterly insane contest, while the competition that followed it was already well on its way. I'm going to quickly address some of the specific one-on-one -on -one moments and specific competitors, starting with one of the night's best matches overall, in my opinion, between Natsupoi of Cosmic Angels and Starlight Kid of Oedo Tai. Starlight Kid's tournament will be one that I think you cannot miss. 
she seems to almost be on a crusade when the five-star GP comes around. And this year, we are seeing a modified look for her, a mask that is partially cut off, and a more villainous look. Something slightly more sinister is going on with her. She is going to take things deadly seriously this year, and it will culminate in her third showdown with Mayu Iwatani. I would just say do not miss what Starlight Kid is doing. Now, her match with Natsupoi was awesome. It began with a sneak attack from Starlight Kid before Natsupoi could even enter the ring. And it saw both of the wrestlers just unleashing move after move. They were inside the ring and out. And the match concluded in what couldn't have been more than seven minutes in total. It was a furious contest from two of the absolute best. And I'm going to be excited to, to rewatch it. The next match I have to talk about took place in the red block between Shuri, the God's Eye faction leader, and the currently unaligned Suzu Suzuki. For some people, this was the most exciting match on paper, and it could easily be considered the match of the night. From Suzu's initial false handshake that started the match all the way to the definitive conclusion, it was clear that these two wrestlers really have something special in terms of their shared chemistry, their coordination, their intensity, and of course their talent as well. People will be very excited to see the next Shuri versus Suzu Suzuki match. It's an easy pick for match of the night, though for me personally, there was one that surpassed it. The match I'm referring to was the 15 minute time limit draw between Julia of DDM and Sari Ano. This match left me utterly speechless. I was in awe throughout the course of this battle. The lengths that these two went through in the span of 15 minutes simply blows my mind. They practically destroyed the entire venue around them. Uh, I really want to take this opportunity to say that Sari Ano is a revelation. The fact that we get to watch her wrestle in stardom makes us the luckiest human beings on the face of the earth, all right? She is otherworldly. She is so complete as a character, as a physical force, as a graceful, acrobatic, dynamic, performative, physical phenom. You kind of see it in everything she does. You see it in how she walks. You see it in how she poses, how she speaks. I feel like she's from another planet, and I don't think we should take a single second of her time and stardom for granted. Lastly, I want to address the main event. Nobody wants to see something like this happen. It's, it's the worst case scenario. Uh, I wish nothing but the best for my favorite wrestler, Saya Kamitani. She's been having a, a most incredible year. She's contributed so much to arguably the best matches of the year plural, best matches of the year. She's been involved in them. And she's on such a promising trajectory, even still after her unprecedented accolades. It really hurts to see this happen to her. I truly felt uh, as she was climbing up that structure and preparing to leap off of it, I felt a sense of trepidation and a voice in my head saying, I don't think they should be doing this. This is not passing judgment or implying that anyone did anything wrong. It's, of course, a tough subject. Uh, the reality is that people in this walk of life will get hurt, and that is inescapable. I just hope that she can remain positive and be taken care of and that she can get well. I really commend everyone within their roster who was assisting as best they could when the injury took place. It's kind of impossible not to see the profound camaraderie and the, the family dynamic that has been cultivated within stardom. It makes me tremendously hopeful, having seen uh, Tam Nakano providing support for Saya, and shortly afterwards seeing Natsupoi providing support for Tam Nakano. The blurring of lines between story and reality are often very noticeable in pro wrestling. 
it's a format in which things are done in the moment. They're done live with one take only. And the seams sometimes are quite apparent. This absolutely was the case tonight uh, when you saw the completely deflated and ineffective promo that was carried out after Saya's injury. It's a prime example of those lines between real events and manufactured events, creative events. You see those lines completely disappearing. I mean, the promo itself had absolutely no legs. It felt so awkward in light of what had just happened. It, it made it tougher and also because Utami Hayashishita was so centrally positioned in that promo. I guess we can simply wait and see how these events, uh, be they tremendous or tragic, end up shaping the course of the five-star GP and the remainder of stardom's landmark 2023. Thanks for listening to Red Belt Radio.